Hi, um, this video um, I'm going to be doing to give people a bit more understanding about people with uh, amputations. Um, I've had my false leg on now since about 11 o'clock today and it is 5 o'clock now. So that's only five, six, seven hours. Um, the NHS recommend eight hours at the maximum. Now, um, this is, I'm going to show you this. Um, I'm going to take my leg off now. I'm going to show you um, what sores and what, not sores necessarily. I haven't got any sores at the moment, but potentially the redness that you get from wearing the socket when you have to wear a suction socket. And it's also going to be a video, uh, and this is prior to my operation to give you an idea of the reason why I'm going for the operation um, and that. So I'm just going to tilt the camera onto its, um, its like tripod bit now, which at this point you won't see my face, you'll just see me taking my uh, leg off and I will show you um, what's what with the leg. Hi again, as you can see, I have took my tracksuit bottoms off because um, you didn't want to see all the ply I've been taking that off anyway. So the, I have a, a carbon fibre socket here with, I have a short titanium, uh, tain, titanium piece in the middle there. This device here is so I can rotate my leg round. It helps changing shoes and stuff like that and uh, socks and all that and putting pants on without actually trying to dress your leg first. Because otherwise, if you didn't have that, it'd find it very difficult to bend to the floor. So what you tend to do is you tend to put your, your clothes on this uh, leg first before putting your leg on. Um, and obviously, depending on what, what's been out, we have wooden floor. The problem is that even though you clean it, it's never as clean as you want it to get. So if you're wearing like some proper like black pants, you know, like suit pants, they could quite, quite easily get dirty with you having them dangling on the floor while you're putting your leg on. So this device helps you put your pants on um, and it's very handy for getting in and out of cars and, and what have you. I use it all the time for getting in and out of the car. Without it, I used to have to put my back seat reclined all the way down to the, to, to the back and then get myself in and then slide my bottom up the back seat um, to be able to get my leg in past the steering wheel because my left leg amputee in, here in the UK, we drive on the right, um, I have to try and get my knee past the steering wheel with me being six foot four tall it's quite it makes it difficult so that device is, is brilliant there at the moment this is my private leg and this is this knee is actually loaned to me at the moment while my, my, my mine's away on service this is a real three knee which is a microprocessor controlled knee um, which gives you a lot more stability and there's a lot of safety features on it like if you stub your toe or anything like that it will um, try and rigid itself up to try and help you from stumbling first of all i have a brio which is as i've mentioned before in one of my other videos which does normally supposed to be for ankle height but i rotate it back or forwards or depending on which way i've got the leg obviously it's upside down at the moment which then moves it's like acts as a second like a second joint near my knee so i can get it on the foot peg of the bike easier rather than my foot peg being here it then moves up towards the toes, which is how you like it. Um, unfortunately, when I had my accident in 2017, which had broke my collarbone, I didn't do that, so that it was here. As I went around the left hand there, my foot caught the floor. And then I have a hydraulic, which is new addition, if we can see it. Hydraulic ankle, which moves backwards and forwards. And it's called an Echelon VT. That is called an Ossa Rio Knee. And that is called Brio by Enderlite, which is the same company who do the Echelon, which is a British company. So anyway, that's the leg. Um, we have a valve here, which you press it, you can hear it release air out, um, and that helps you take it on and off. You can take the valve completely out, which I'll do now to make things a bit easier. It's, it has to go in tight because it has a rubber seal and because it creates a vacuum underneath, it is quite difficult to get off at times. So the valve comes out, it's a push button, this one sticks. You can get ones which are magnetic and you can get some with a flush. I prefer the flush ones because where that is, when I rest my elbows, I can, sometimes I can actually release air out of it. So I'm gonna take the leg off now um, and I'll show you the rubber liner I have to put on, because I use a suction socket, that's why I've got that. It creates a vacuum, so it creates a suction. So the leg, I don't know need for a belt or a strap. So um, I'll take this leg off now and I'll show you what the rubber liner is like. Um, 
and we'll go from there onwards. So, there's the leg off. Um, also with this knee, the real three, you press that device in there, you lock the knee, which is handy for if you your battery goes down on your, um, if the battery runs flat. If the battery runs flat, then you've got the option to run it as a rigid knee. Unfortunately, you can't swing your leg through, you have to swing it outwards, which I got a really bad habit from doing that for years of NHS legs before I managed to get to a position where I could use a bendable knee. Uh, thingy. Now this is a rubber liner, it has one, two, three, four, five fins on the edge which when they go into the socket they create um, a vacuum and they can't come past. Unfortunately when you when you first put it in the leg you have to lube it up with, um, I've got some stuff here, um, Osser lubricant spray which is you spray inside the leg, inside the, um, yeah, the, inside the top of the leg, the socket of the leg. Now, uh, a quick, another thing with the socket at the top of the leg, even though it's carbon fibre, you have a rubber inner. And the rubber inner um, is supposed to help with, um, well, soreness for one and, and various other bits and bobs. Um, I still find that this bit here and there where your ductor tendon is always a bit too high for me. And, and that's where I get a lot of pressure sores because my ductor tendon is quite... Uh, solid tendon i've got wear there you can see on the socket where it's been if you can see where the carbon's been breaking away over time um so but anyway we'll take the rubber liner off now and as you can see as i take it off you have to peel it off like a second skin all right now that's off but what you can see from that i'll move a bit closer you get a lot of redness which is from the tightness of it and the, uh, the liner rings and goes right the way up to the top. You can see there across the top. And then on the inside, um, I've got myself covered up. You can see it's all dark and red there. That is through um, time and time of using the, the, the socket. So um, that's, you can say you get redness, but I'm going in for an operation. because I've got a new Roman at the back of the stump just there which they took and taken out and you can see by how sloppy that is that is another reason for refashioning it because I can't get a stable stump to be able to fit in the liner in the leg which means from day to day I get various different degrees of level of comfort and, and what have you so um, so I'll be going in on Monday morning crack of dawn but I just thought I'd just show you this before I go in um, and that's it for now and I'll get back to you short shortly